Hey guys, this is Pascal from Aristides and welcome to the Aristides factory. Today we're going to give you guys a full rundown of the factory. So we're going to do a full factory tour video. The last one we did was back in 2019. I was kind of shocked when I saw how long ago that was and I think it's long overdue to show you guys the factory, show you the entire build process, show you some guitars while we're at it, and uh, yeah, just to uh, show everything that has been changed. And if you're new here and you never saw the old ones, uh, don't worry, you don't need that info. So we're gonna start and we're gonna show everything from front to back, like from the start of the process to the absolute end where we ship the guitars. So yeah, let's, let's see what we got here. We're here in Harlem, the Netherlands. This is where we build everything so we built everything here in-house at the Aristides factory this is where the guys are that respond to your first questions that you ask us online and where the guys are that ship your guitars out to you so we control the entire process something we absolutely love when facilitating our clients with amazing guitars yeah so let's start uh behind me this is our little demo room we have here uh we have some guitars on the wall we can show you guys uh so if you're not familiar with aristides aristides is a custom guitar brand and we build guitars out of our own materials we don't use wood we use our arium construction which basically is um we create an exoskeleton out of carbon fiber, glass fiber, and we inject our arium core into that. And arium is our own special material. It's extremely resonant, um, sounds really good, and it works great for electric guitars. So let's start with our base model lines because we've got some different shapes that you can customize to your own liking. Over here in the corner, uh, we start with the O series, which come in six, seven, and eight strings. This is the O60. Uh, you see over here, um, comes in a lot of different configurations. We can do it with humbuckers, single coils. We've got a lot of different bridges we can offer on it as well. And there are two types of finished styles that we offer. We have custom painted guitars and we have our raw finished guitars. We're going to deep dive into that later during the tour. Over here, you see an 060R raw build. If we go all the way to the corner, this is an 080. So this is an eight string version of that series. Uh, is equipped with uh, with an Evertune bridge and a beautiful customized finish we did uh, in collaboration with a client. Clients always come up with amazing finishes and we have so much fun figuring that out and coming up with a beautiful build together. Aside from our O series, we also have our S series, which is the multi-scale version of the O series pretty much. It, it comes in six, seven and eight string as well. We're still super proud of these series this is like the pinnacle of Aristides guitar design as we like to say it has like we said a multi-scale it has a our pickups the passive pickups are custom made as well because we want them to be exactly in line with the fan of the guitar so we built custom bobbins for that where our partners BKP and Lundgren they wire custom pickups for us using custom bass plates so a lot of custom stuff this one is even equipped with a custom multi-scale Evertune that we developed ourselves in collaboration with Evertune so that is the S series that's a beautiful 070S in a custom paint then we also have our H series this is an H06, the six string version. We built this model in six, seven, eight, and nine string even. The H series uh, are also multi-scale. They have the same fan as our S series guitars. Yeah, it's a headless, lightweight, very ergonomic guitar, still very full sounding. Sounds like a full Aristides, just in a way smaller, more ergonomic package. Uh, on this, we do, we do custom hardware as well. We developed a custom tremolo system, which is on this one. So this is the H series in a beautiful custom sparkle finish. We also do the H series in raw. We do all our models in raw. So you can always decide if you want a raw finished guitar or a painted. And last for now, we also have our T series. This is the Aristides TO. Only comes in six string right now. Um, but yeah, this is also a very customizable model. This one is spec'd out pretty classic with tele pickups and a pick guard. You can also go crazy with just a single bridge humbucker and, and an Evertune bridge without a pick guard. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it. This is also the only current Aristides model available in 22 frets. So this one has 22 frets where all our other models have 
24 frets. So that's just a quick introduction to our line of models. Outside of these, we also offer bases now. We're actually fully uh, committed right now and are working on the molds for all the production models. We already have some prototypes out in the world and we did a bunch of pre-orders and we're actually starting to build all those pre-orders for clients now. So you're not gonna see a lot of bases, but yeah, we're, we're stoked to introduce our multi-scale base series and, and show those to the world. And now we're gonna start at the beginning of the process. So we're gonna go down to our, what we call our laminating room. That's where we make the bodies of the guitars. Okay, uh, so let's start. We're gonna go into our, what we call our laminating room. This is where we make the bodies for all our models. It's ran by our laminating chef, Tato. Uh, who has a strong resemblance to Kratos from God of War. That's why you see a picture of, well, Tato or Kratos, whatever you want. Uh, let's go in here and see what these guys are doing. Okay, so we're here with Tato and Flo, who just started a day of, well, making our Aesthetus bodies. And it's a very delicate process. Everything we do in the beginning is really important because if this is not done precisely, uh, you'll get a lot of extra material on the guitars, extra sanding work, so we're trying to avoid that. Um, we've set up a process uh, that is very streamlined these days. Like in the beginning of our Aesthetus, when we had to make bodies, it took two guys like a full day to barely finish one guitar. And nowadays we can do about six guitars a day with a day and a half of work. So one guy's here for half the day, one guy's here for full day, and we can create six bodies. So. Um, what we see over here, Tato is uh, brushing in the first layer. This is gonna be a raw guitar, which is why it's black. The raw guitars are already colored during the molding process. So the outer coating of the guitar is already the color that the guitar will eventually be. With the painted guitars, it's always gray and we later primer that and paint that into the color it's gonna be. With the raw guitars, it's gonna be sanded and coated with a nano coating. Uh, but we'll show you guys that later. So Tato is putting in the first layer right now. As you can see, it's very delicate. You wanna make sure that it's as thin as possible, but still fully covering uh, the entire uh, body. And this is the first layer. Um, the day consists out of putting in multiple layers in both mold halves. So we've got two halves that later on come together becoming the guitar. So this is the first layer. Later on, we're gonna brush in glass fiber. We're gonna brush in uh, carbon fiber. And at the end of the day, we put the two halves together and we uh, use that pressure pump on the wall to uh, get the arium into the body, to inject it into the body and make sure that we tilt it so it's all the way through the body. And the arium is what we like to do, to refer to as our special sauce in a way. It's a mixture of different resins and glass bubbles and it basically hardens out into the exoskeleton, creating a very resonant guitar. So the arium is very open. It creates like a million tiny air chambers inside the guitar, causing for great resonance. Uh, as you can see, the guitar is all one piece. So it's resonating from the beginning of the body to the top of the headstock or no headstock in the case of a headless guitar. And yeah, so at the end of the day, we close things up. The arium is in there. It hardens out overnight. And then the next morning when we take it out of the molds, we still put it in an oven for half a day to make sure that the arium is fully hardened out into the exoskeleton and that your Aristides body is ready to go to the next step. But for the next step, I think it makes sense if we start with the fretboards. We're gonna go over to another area and talk about the Aristides fretboards that we use. Okay, so we're here in an other area right now where we're gonna talk about the fretboards for a bit. Before we do, another cool thing to show you guys is when we design a new model, we uh, always have to course design the model first and then afterwards we have to create a mold so to do that we always have like a mother model routed over here you see one of our SB base uh, uh, models that we are going to use to extract a mold out of so the molds you just saw at the laminating room uh, those will be made using this so that's definitely something I wanted to show you guys before we get onto the fretboards. So onto the fretboards. Uh, for our fretboards, we don't use wood either. We use a material called Richlight. Richlight is a composite material. It's made from recycled paper and phenolic resins. And it looks like this. So almost like a really nice black ebony uh, board. Uh, Richlight sounds really good. It feels great too. Uh, it's just 
To us right now, it's the best material available to put in our guitars. Uh, it works well with our Aryan bodies. It's uh, yeah, all around a great material. It comes in two different colors. So you have what we call black rich light and you have what we call light rich light, which resembles more of a maple-ish look, if that is a, is a right way to put it. Um, What's good to know about our fretboards is that we offer several inlay variations, like standard inlay options. You can get them with the Aristides uh, model logo on the 12th fret. Uh, you can get it with face dots, you can get it with offset dots, or just all clean. Um, the A you see on the first fret, you'll always see on our multi-scale models. Those don't have our logo on the guitar anywhere, so they don't have the logo on the headstock or on the headless, you don't even have the headstock. So instead of that, we always put the A logo on the first fret on those models. So that's why you see that. Um, for the inlays, we use different materials. A popular one is Mother of Pearl, which is one of our standard options, um, always looks great. But we can also do pretty much any color in terms of uh, epoxy that we can put into the fretboard. So, a lot of people, when they get an orange raw build, for instance, they love to have their inlays matching the body, so we get the exact color in the fretboard to have orange inlays. But you can also go absolutely bananas. We can also do crazy things with the epoxy material. We've done glow-in-the-dark inlays. We can do uh, whatever color you can think of. We can even do sparkles. And we just saw this one laying around, which is it's not fully popping just yet because we're still working on it, but if you look up close, you can see that it says Killer in Pink Sparkle, which is really cool, and it has a, a Pink Sparkle heart on the fretboard as well. I know that this is going on a Black Raw TO, which is gonna be a really cool build. For the side dots, we exclusively work with Luminlay. You can get that in blue or green. And Luminlay is a, a glowing material that lights up when you're playing in the dark, so it's very, convenient when you're on stage or in a poorly lit room you pretty much just charge them with a with a light and they glow up during your gig so it's uh, something we find very very convenient and uh, yeah like to offer as a standard they don't really look different in daylight like the blue and the green it's always pretty much the same it's like an off whitish color so that's how they look uh, but they light up differently. So uh, for our frets, we exclusively work with uh, Jeskar from the US and Jeskar makes our stainless steel frets. So all our Aristides frets are always stainless steel. We really want to make very durable tools for musicians. That's how we like to put it. Uh, just a, a, a great workhorse. Your guitar should always deliver whatever you need from it and that in our opinion, requires something like stainless steel frets. They feel great to play, they sound great, but they're also extremely durable and you don't have to worry about fret wear and stuff like that too much like you'd have with nickel silver frets. So that's why we work exclusively with stainless steel frets. In addition to the fretboards, like we're here with Marta right now who is in charge of our fretboards and responsible for all the, the inlays that we put in there. Right now, Martin is working on a custom inlay that we routed using our CNC machine, but he's like cleaning it up. This is a, a customer who wanted kind of like a pill moon ambony look in the guitar. So we did like, a, we routed that in and we're gonna fill that up with black epoxy to create that effect. It's gonna be a really cool fretboard. Yeah, so uh, that's what, what Martin is doing over here. And once the fretboard is fully ready, so the inlays are done, uh, we glue it onto the guitar. Uh, I just realized that we haven't even showed you the product that comes out of the mold. So what we're going to do first is we're going to pick up a guitar and show you how they come out of the mold. Okay, so I just picked up an 070 S body. This is going to be a painted guitar, so it has the gray uh, surface on it. As you can see, this is still very rough. It almost feels like a test dummy. It comes out of the mold and we have to do a lot of sanding to it to make it actually into a flawless guitar. Uh, this body already had some sanding done. These days we developed a program on one of our robots that we use to do some initial sanding on the guitar. A lot of it is still handwork, uh, but yeah, we're trying to develop robotic systems that make our lives easier so that we're able to take some of the manual labor that goes into the sanding because like half the work we do here is sanding. Take that out of the process and have that done by robots to create even more consistency and uh, again, makes our, makes our lives better. Yeah, so over here uh, at Sahil Spot, we have a guitar that just got the fretboard. 
put on, is currently being put on to make sure that everything is measured out perfectly. And next up, you're gonna put on the epoxy glue and glue the fretboard to the body, right? Yeah, truss rod in. A truss rod in, it's not in yet, but we'll put the truss rod in first, put the glue on, and then the fretboard. So that's what we do to, to get the fretboards onto the guitar. Uh, after that, it's some cleaning. We make it rest for a day, and then the next morning we take it out of the, of the clamps, and you have a guitar with a fretboard, pretty much like the guitars you see over here. Here, for instance, we, uh, we have a guitar with really cool block inlays with the fretboard on the body um, uh, that's now ready to get routed. So let's go to our routing department and show you guys how we do the routing on our guitars because that has changed ever since we did the Lab Factory Tour. Okay, so over here we're in the corner of the factory where we have our machinery. Uh, one of our uh, newer machines, we've been using it for a couple years now, is the robot we have over there in the corner. Right now it's doing some pre-sanding on raw guitars, but that robot is also used to do uh, the routing of the cavities for the back of the guitar on all our models. So we use that, uh, right now it's sanding, but it's also capable of doing routing. And we basically put up a couple guitars. Uh, we have the programs for all the different routing in our computer system. and. The robot is capable of picking up his own tools and doing the routing for us, where a few years ago we were still doing that by hand. It makes a huge difference in terms of consistency and work. Uh, it was also a lot of work, and it still is, to make sure that the robot does exactly what we want it to do, but we're making some great moves with that, and uh, we're excited to do more and more with it. The same thing goes for the sanding that we already do on the robot. Currently, it's just the front and the back of the bodies of the raw guitars, so the detailing is still all done by hand. But it's a huge help and, and time saver for us. And uh, yeah, we're, we've got a couple guys here at the shop devoted to bring that robot program to newer, higher levels, you know? And uh, one of the other robots is not in operation right now that we have is the smaller one you see over here. Uh, this one is even more precise than the big one we have over there. And we're currently using this one to do pre-sanding on the, on the gray uh, guitars that are going into paint later on. So they already pre-sand the front and the back of the bodies, like you just saw on the guitar I showed. We're currently in, in the process of also sanding back some of the paint layers using this. In the future, it should also be capable of taking away some of the polishing work that we do on gloss finishes. But uh, hopefully in a couple years when we do another factory tour, we'll be there. Right now it's still in the early stages, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a very important tool for the future here. Over there in the corner is our CNC machine. We use that one to route the fretboard cavities, the bridges. Uh, and all that stuff. We also use our CNC machine to route in the custom inlays. The custom inlays are always, uh, it's a, a collaboration with the customer. So a customer has an ID, uh, we look into what is possible and what is routable. They usually provide us with a vector file or a high-res uh, JPEG. Then our designer goes to work and turns that into a fretboard design, uh, which then has to be approved by the client. And when everything is all good, we route it into the fretboard and put the epoxy uh, material in there to create the custom inlay. I know there's an amazing guitar here right now. This is, this is pretty next level though, in terms of like custom inlay. This was a crazy design uh, provided to us by a client. And you even have the Aristides logo under the rocket and a lot of custom colors that we used for this. Uh, and a lot of different routing passes. So this was uh, a horror to make. It was a lot of work, but yeah, the end result is, is stunning and I can't wait to see this guitar fully finished. Next up, after this guitar is fully routed, it goes back to Martin, who we just saw with, uh, with the fretboards, uh, to install the frets. So let's go over there and show you guys that process. So we're here with Martin right now, who is working on a guitar. He was just using a pencil to mark the fretboard uh, to see where he would still have to level it using our leveling tool. I know we just said that we also always route the guitars before we do this. We do that, but we just came out of our summer break and for logistic reasons, we are already doing the fretwork on these guitars before they get routed. Normally, it's the other way around. But now Martin is going to level the fretboard 
to make sure that everything is well leveled before we install our frets. And for our frets, uh, back in the day, of up to a year or two ago, we always used to cut the stainless steel frets by hand for each individual guitar. That's obviously a lot of labor. It's also not the most fun thing in the world to cut stainless steel. Am I correct, Martin? Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, it hurts. It hurts your hands. Uh, and what we developed in collaboration with a, a company nearby that has a very advanced machine park, we are now able to pre-route and radius all our frets. So we pretty much stock each individual fret for each model that we have here in the factory that's already ready to put into the guitars. Maybe you can show us what we have there. So you have these little trays. This is the 070S model, which is the same as the Headless 7 model. Yeah, and as you can see, we have each fret ready. So this is the first fret, the first fret we have here. Yeah, this is, this is really cool and super clean. The fret is already radiused exactly to what it needs to be. And it's already uh, yeah, routed and radiused and we can pretty much just put it into the guitar and press it in. Yep. We don't use glue for our frets. We press them into the guitar and make sure that they are stuck. Yeah, so that's how we do it these days. It's a relatively new process for us still. It works like a dream. Still very, not really information you guys need, but it's still very expensive right now. So we need to figure out how we can do this on a bigger scale and bring the cost down because it's, it's pricey at, po at this point, but it's a lifesaver for you yes, when is. you're doing your work. And it's a completely different process than a few years ago. Uh, it's faster, it's easier, and it's more precise and consistent, which is what we're constantly looking for. So again, normally this would be routed already, not right now. Here you can see the frets installed in the guitar when this is all done here we have one that is actually routed we mask the entire fretboard and you pretty much hand the guitar over to the sanding department let me see i think we touched everything that happens here in this department and next up we're going to go to the sanding department which like i said is a huge portion of our work here at our students okay so we're here in the sanding department and we have different sanding processes happening here. So we have the painted guitars and the raw guitars. The painted guitars go through a different process. So let's start with that. Over here we have Manu who is working on a guitar. This is an 070. Yeah, this is an 070. I'm just checking if it's not a light gray raw color because we offer a light gray raw color that looks a lot like this when it's untreated. So this is the, uh, yeah, the initial uh, process uh, of sanding where Manu gets uh, the first preparation done. We uh, get the seam off that's always on the guitar where the bodies, uh, body halves meet and we get the first sanding done. Like the eventual goal here is to get the body fully sanded so it is ready for primer paint. Over here we have a guitar that's uh, primered. We use different colors for the primer. If it's a light finish uh, with lighter, brighter colors, we use white. If it's a dark finish, we use a black primer. So this is the primer. And also with the primer, we're gonna do the same thing as we do on the gray coatings. We're gonna sand this back so we can apply the color. Next up, we pretty much apply the finish that the customer uh, chose for his guitar and uh, put a filler on that. And what you get after that is, let me see if we have some guitars in filler. I think Britta over there is working on one. So this guitar uh, got his uh, initial layer, initial filler. This is a sparkle that's gonna get some more steps to it, but um, so it's not fully finished. It's not gonna look how it looks right now. Uh, but again, once the filler is done, we have to sand that back completely again and apply the final gloss or satin on a guitar to get a guitar ready. With sparkles, because of their, there's a lot of material on there, there's sparkles in there, we have to do a couple extra steps, do another round of fillers to make sure that the sparkles are well settled into the guitar. So that's over here. So for the paint process, it is a lot of sanding. For the raw guitars, you already hear it, uh, we have Geert over here, who is our raw master. 
and he just started on a new batch of raw guitars. We always work in badges each week. You see this week's batch completed and currently drying from the nano coating. And this is pretty much the, the, the start of everything, right, Geert? Yep. Getting the Getting the seams off of the, that come out of the mold. Are these already pre-sanded by the robot or getting ready? Yeah, so the, the first step we just showed you guys is that they go under the robot and they get the, the sanding uh, of the front and the back done. But again, most of the work, most of the sanding work is still done by hand. And that's the most specialized sanding that we do because the raw guitars have that structure in them. They have like these grooves in there and those are all sanded in and they have to be perfectly straight. Yeah, we're doing that right now. After that, it's just uh, making sure that the entire body is sanded in the way that we want it to. And the final step of the raws is coating it. For that, we use a special nano coating that's also used to uh, put on statues and the, on which they want to keep off graffiti and stuff. So it's extremely durable and it makes that the, the entire guitar is protected in a great way. And it's yeah, they feel great, they, they sound amazing, and it's also good to know that they are built exactly in the same way as our painted guitar. So the rods are slightly cheaper and slightly faster to produce because we can skip the entire paint process and all that extra sanding and painting. But aside from that, they're built in the exact same way by the same people. Yeah, over there you see guitars that were just nano-coated. You see some different colors. We'll show some more at assembly. They're currently drying, and you can probably see the grooves I was talking about that get sanded in. You feel those slightly, but the guitar kind of feels like a super satin, super smooth touch. Let's move, move over to Rodney, our paint guy, and show you guys some of the paint work we do here and how we approach that. Okay, we're here in our paint room right now. This is where we keep all the ingredients that we need to create all the crazy paint jobs that we do. Uh, obviously, we are not blessed with fancy beautiful wooden tops like flame maple tops and whatnot when the guitars come out of the mold they just don't look that good when they come out of the mold so uh, ever since we started we devoted ourselves to be yeah to be great at doing amazing paint jobs and over the years we've developed a ton of different systems ton of different options possibilities that can be done on our guitars. We have relatively simple satin finish with a nice pearl in it. We do chameleons, we do marbles, we do sparkles, we do crazy variations to all those or combine them or go crazy for clients who want custom graphics on their guitar, uh, you name it. And it's it's been such a fun ride through the years doing all these different paints, flakes, uh, inks that we use to to create finishes. Over there is the master himself who's already trying to get out of the camera right now. It's Rodney, our paint guy, who is responsible for all the all the all the paint work uh, you guys see on Instagram or on our website. Yeah, we mix everything here. We we uh, we and we make everything here. And if we peek through the window, you can see Rodney working on a couple guitars. He's putting up some uh, some protection over there or he's taking it away. I'm not sure what he was doing exactly, but he was trying to keep things clean, which is really important in a paint booth because the last thing you want is dust and, and whatnot in there, which is also the reason why we're not walking in there right now, because we don't want to interfere the paint process or risk going in from the dusty sanding area, going into the actual paint booth. So we're gonna keep that closed. But if we walk around it, we can take a good peek through the window and we can probably dress Paul up in a, in a nice protection suit and get him in, to, in there with Rodney, taking some cool paint shots for you guys. So, are you excited for that, Paul? Yeah, I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> okay, so we're walking around now. Uh, everywhere over here at our cities, you see guitars uh, in different stages. Yeah, over here, we can take a peek through the window and see what Rodney has been cooking. Uh, cooking something very special, I see. This is a, a custom camo paint. Uh, not just camo, it's also made with all our different chameleon finish just we offer. So this is going to be madness. We did one of these for Phil from of Mice and Man a long time ago. I think it's been like four years or so. And now we have another customer who really oh, loved that look and wanted that too. For the camos, we don't use any uh, uh, stickers or 
hydro dips or whatever, every layer is painted. So yeah, just imagine the work that goes into taping and masking that all off, uh, because every layer needs to be put on individually. So this is definitely one of our more expensive finishes just because of the labor involved, but the end result is gonna be stunning. So uh, beautiful guitar. I see a beautiful orange next to it, and you see other guitars under those tanning beds right now we use uv uh, lacquers so they need to be uh, dried out with uh, uv uh, uv light so that's why we have those tanning beds there and multiple guitars are in there right now getting their tan on this is the entire paint booth so you can see it's pretty uh, pretty big uh, it's being powered by these units over here over here we have rodney's paint preparation uh, spot where we do uh, a lot of different things so here's what we do a lot of taping to make sure that the guitars are ready to go into the paint booth cleaning and all that stuff like for our custom finishes we we always make sure that whenever a client has an ID uh, we well we we start discussions and we talk about it and like what are you expecting and what do we want to get out of it and to ensure that we're all loving what we're gonna get on the guitar, we always make a paint test. So this is an example of a custom finish we're doing for a client really soon. This, uh, you see the green sticker that it was approved. We make a paint test based on the design IDs that we had, send them pictures and videos, and make sure we get their approval before it's cleared for painting. If we have to do another test, that's what it is, but we wanna make sure that it's perfect before we put it on the guitar. I have some different ones here. We have a, a beautiful, custom desert tan sparkle we've got a custom marble with a someone who's probably from Australia uh, I know he's from Australia he's from Australia uh, so we've got a koala on there uh, this is a custom watercolor paint thing in black and white we're doing for someone really soon and uh, another geo camo in weird colors so just for you guys to get the point, we always want to make sure that we, we're going to knock it out of the park for the client and make sure that we make the paint test to uh, be sure of that. So here's where we, where we have several guitars that are currently in process of being painted. Uh, I see a lot of guitars that were sanded back to get the final coating. Uh, they look sanded, not too spectacular. This is a rose gold chameleon with a worn on it. A chameleon with a custom graphic on it, just to get an idea of what is possible here. If you want to see what's possible in terms of paints, I definitely recommend to go to the gallery section on our website. We have about, well, at this point, we have about 2,000 guitars and we always make sure that we upload all the pictures of the guitar that finishes uh, each month. Yeah, you're gonna be able to filter through there, uh, select different finishes you want to see side by side. See 15 different purple, red chameleon builds with different fretboards, different hardware, just to see what you like in terms of combo. So I definitely recommend to go to the gallery section of our website. Here we just have a bunch of guitars in different stages. Some guitars are ready to get color on, some guitars are ready to get their final paint on, which is either gonna be satin, and after that they are done. If it's gonna be gloss, we still need to polish the guitars. And the polishing is something we take very, very serious. It takes about four hours to properly polish our gloss guitars to make sure they are absolutely wow. You know, you want that wow effect when a client gets a guitar, so we buff everything up. Let's show you guys where we actually do that. So basically we uh, put a guitar into this thing, so we're able to rotate it and it's uh, put in firm so it's not gonna fall out. And when it's in there, uh, we use uh, polishing tools to make sure the guitar is exactly how we want it to be like i said when you get a gloss rst this we really want people to be you know get it out of the case and be like wow this is this is insane so we always do whatever we can to make sure everything is polished to perfection like i said it takes about four hours to get that done when a guitar is fully polished or a raw guitar is coated and ready to go we move them to our assembly area and that's where we're gonna go to right now and show you guys what we do over there. Okay, so we're here. Guys, we're even geen rare thing to say. Two minutes. Okay, we're here at the assembly area. This is a guitar that is fully polished and ready to go. It's a sick Galactic Sparkle TO with a single bridge humbucker uh, uh but yeah this is this is ready to move to assembly behind me 
You see all these crates. Uh, we always prep crates for each customer with all their individual parts in there. So we offer a lot of di different bridges. We work with Hipshot, Fixed and Tram. We work with Hantuk for the headless hardware. We do Floyd Roses. We still do Schaller Hannes as a custom option on the six string. We do Evertunes, we do Tele stuff. So it, it always depends on what a customer wants. And we wanna make sure that the guys at assembly can easily assemble a guitar. So all the parts are in there. The custom pickups that we have for each customer are in there, all the parts. What we do basically for a new week, we assign guitars that are moving to the assembly stages and this is one of them okay so the first step is to get all the hardware onto the guitars over here we have a rack of guitars that just got their hardware installed this week this is uh, an hs 060s a single coil and a humbucker uh, as you can see the pickups are installed the bridge is installed and the bass is installed next up the full electronics on this guitar are going to be done. The electronics, we always try to make all the wiring that we do as clean as possible. It's kind of like our business card that you, when you open up your RCS or when you have a raw guitar, which always have like a semi see-through backplate, that you always see that your wiring is done really clean. Also helps if you ever want to change any parts or want to change your pickups, it's really easy. As you can see, we really take our time to make sure that everything in there under the hood looks really clean so once the hardware is on we level the frets one more time we do that over there this is tim our lead assembly hi guys tim what are you doing right now um so what we're going to do is the hardware is in electronics are done we set up the guitar with the string gotchas that the customer wants in the tuning that the customer wants uh, we make a little preset up so it aligns to the to how it's gonna play. Then we put it on the bench. We're gonna tilt the guitar into what we call playing position because that's how we want the guitar to be the best playable. We use this ruler to check if the neck is nice and straight, so we so the ruler comes to the fretboard, so we can align that to the best position. So that's why we have the light so we can see if there's any light shining through and if we need to adjust the neck a little bit before we're gonna level the frets. So this one is perfect for leveling. After that, we're gonna assume the zero position on the neck, how it is in the playing position. And now we're gonna tilt it back and then we're gonna bring back the neck in the flat, in the flat position again to the zero points, so we have the same outcome as we have it in playing position, and then we're gonna level it, and it should be a piece of cake. And then everything is aligned and ready for crowning and beveling to make your frets nice and shiny. Yeah, it's also because of the work that the guys do over there and the consistency of the frets that the leveling is usually a piece of cake here at yeah, yeah, assembly. Yeah. It's mainly a checkup thing that we do yeah. to ensure that everything is perfect. Definitely. And, yeah. uh, yeah, well, well, thank you, Tim, for that. So after the leveling is done, uh, we uh, make the nut for each guitar. As we said, we have custom blanks that are made by GraphTech. We use GraphTech nuts. Uh, we have custom blanks for all our models, so we don't have to pre-cut the nut, which is always uh, easy. There's still work to be done. You need to get it at the right height and you need to get the slots in there. Uh, as Tim already mentioned, we always set up our guitars to the wishes of our clients. So if you want to play your seven string in drop F sharp with 10 to 74 gauges, we'll do that. If you want it to be very light with nines, we can do that too. We always want to make sure that our guitars are set up exactly to the customer wishes. So when you get the guitar, you don't have to worry about like, got this thing in standard, but I want to go to drop C and I know I need to work on my nut. So we're going to take care of all that. For strings nowadays, we work with Stringjoy who offers pretty much all gauges that we need. So we can we can do whatever people want with that. Behind Tim, you see a lot of guitars. We have a lot of guitars at assembly right now. These are all guitars that are gonna be shipped out within the next two months. We can pick up a, a few different ones just uh, while we're here. This is uh, one of those examples where people combine things that we offer. This is a chameleon with a rainbow or galactic sparkle flake. Well, yeah, with all the variations we offer, it's just always so cool to see yeah, the variety in guitars. Like people, people 
come up with really cool configurations from beautiful looking raw guitars that are that simple, like a full blacked out guitar, no bullshit to, again, a chameleon with our Arctic Sunset Sparkle. This one has a painted gold binding on there as well. And a fully custom fretboard, which is, uh, yeah, very cool build. We even have a big gold arcade button kill switch on there. So yeah, a lot of guitars. I could be here for another hour talking about finishes and I wouldn't mind, but let's keep the pace going. Okay, so now we're moving over here where Paz and Sahil are working on the frets for the guitar. So this is the final dress that we do on the frets. Sahil is currently in the preparation stage. Here's, a, here's another guitar that uh, the frets just finished. We, we, we put a lot of pride and or take a lot of pride in our fret work and put a lot of time in making sure that it's like perfect mm -hmm. all the time so uh, yeah the dress is always like another signature thing for our students the way we do it and the way we finish it and we try to do that as consistent as is possible and uh, yeah we always get get great feedback from our clients on our fret work which is uh, always great to hear because we really try and we try to put a lot of time into that so that's what happens here. After that, you make the nut and you put the nut in the guitar, right? Yeah, yeah, I will. After the nut is made, the guitar is pretty much ready to go. And the last thing we need to do is do a full Q QC check. We always do multiple at assembly to ensure that we, again, we have a lot of options. We have a lot of different wiring options, color, make sure that all the specs are exactly how the customer ordered it. Sometimes we get questions for custom wiring, make sure that that is all checked and exactly how the customer ordered it. And uh, yeah, that's what we do over here. And once the guitars are here, they're pretty much ready to get the back plate installed on here. So this is still open and every guitar is covered with a back plate that we install here. After that, the guitars are all good to go, get one more QC check before they're ready to ship out. Okay, so when the guitars are fully finished, we always make sure to take a full picture set for each client to enjoy. The same picture sets we always upload to our website as well for people to check out later for inspiration. You basically get your picture set, hopefully you're happy with what you see, and we get everything ready for shipping. We ship our guitars in these cases, these are made by Quantum Industries, and these are extremely high-end soft cases, even with a TSA lock on there. And with the way we pack our guitars, they're super protective of our guitars. And uh, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate that we, uh, in uh, over, uh, what is it, 15 years now of shipping guitars, that we barely have any incidents where there's damage on the guitar. And these bags definitely play a huge part in that. This is the headless version of the bag. We also have the bigger one, which is uh, the one uh, we use to ship the, the regular guitars in, the headstock guitars in. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we basically ship the guitar out, uh, make sure that we are available to help anyone with paperwork, like custom stuff. We always make sure that we have our logistics guy present to, uh, to guide our customers through the whole shipping process. And uh, in the end of it, someone has a guitar and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully is loving it. That kind of wraps up this quick overview of the Aristides factory, what we do over here and how we build our guitars. I hope you enjoyed this uh, overview. If you have any questions or um, want to know something about the ordering process or about possibilities, just let us know. Send us an email, uh, contact us through our socials and we'll do what we can to help you with that. So thanks so much for watching and see you guys next time.